This is Pradeep Dixit, director of Though the City is Silent. And so we're just going to talk a little bit about this new film, which has just been released or about to be released. Mm -hmm. And you've entered it in the Oberhausen mm -hmm. Festival. Yeah. Uh, can you um, tell me a little bit of, again, for maybe the third time, about the oh. origins of the film, how yeah. it got started? <coughs> Well, uh, <coughs> it's like this, that uh, uh, in 1981, uh, this one institution called the Indian School of Social Sciences Bombay. They had organized one uh, seminar on Indian cinema, uh, 1981, where I happened to read one paper on audience and the short film. Uh, this particular audience and the short film is being sort of it wasn't only a paper, but uh, it's sort of a mission which I, on which I am working. Because uh, over the years, I've felt that though uh, there are so many documentary films are being made in our country, and uh, they're being released through film distribution, they're being released in commercial theaters, now they start coming on Doordarshan, on television network. There is no audience of its own mm -hmm. for the documentary films. Uh, the feeling is that uh, the documentaries are almost sort of forced on people. They are forced to see the film mm -hmm. rather than they want to see a film. And uh, the reason that uh, although the very good documentary films are made in our country, uh, they are not appreciated. There is no audience for those films. So I, I had done a research, I did a study of all this. And in this paper, I wanted to tell people is what is why it is necessary that you have to create audience for the short films you have mm -hmm. to create an audience for the documentary films this was the whole purpose of presenting that paper and were you advocating specific measures for creating this audience yeah for sure like uh, <coughs> sorry uh, miss one of the reasons that i feel that uh, the audience why there is no audience for the documentary films is basically because uh, the distribution of the documentary films mm -hmm. is totally monopolized in our country mm -hmm. by government, uh, uh, our government. I mean, it's uh, Films Division who distributes documentary films and it's Doordarshan. So one has to think of a documentary film uh, which will fit into their framework. Mm -hmm. and then and then you have a chance of getting that film released. Uh, the reason being that, uh, and one of the reasons definitely that why there is no audience for the short film is definitely that most of the documentary films which are which they see in the theatre are bad. I mean, they are very one-sided. Most of them are very poster kind of thing, which only reflects one side of the uh, problem, and that's always the mm -hmm. government side of the problem. And uh, uh, audience can't identify, you know, means uh, they can't identify with the problem they are talk, well, the, the, it's being talked in the documentary film. So, uh, few measures which I suggested in those papers was that instead of forcing the audience which goes to theater to see feature film, to get entertainment, to get himself a bit relaxed from his day to day life, you can't, that's not a proper place or a right place to inform him, to educate him, to tell him. Mm -hmm. If you have to do it, you have to do it in a different manner, take him away from this, show those films in their to totality mm -hmm. and then perhaps whatever you are trying to communicate will be communicated. Otherwise, uh, 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 the audience can't just digest what is being said. A, that is said in very bad manner, it's said in one-sided way and he is not in a mental makeup, he is not in a mental frame to really go and listen to that. So the idea was that uh, instead of distributing this film and showing them during the uh, cinema houses, during the cinema show, you have a separate show mm -hmm. of documentary films, say of one hour or two hours, and show these films to the audience. So slowly, like in our country, there is now definitely an audience for a new cinema, the art cinema or what we call it. It's because uh, 
it was first shown in mini theaters. It was mm -hmm. shown to an audience of 100, 100, 200. It was shown through film society. It was shown to in festivals, where that kind of audience is prepared to receive something new. Similar way, I thought it's necessary that we have to have a separate channel, separate system of showing documentary films rather than show, uh, showing them in theater. Secondly, what happens, which I have experienced about my own films, like in cinema houses, the theater owner is most reluctant to show your documentary film. It may be award winning or it may be anything. For the simple reason that he doesn't get any revenue from them. Mm -hmm. Like government, he uh, uh, wants them to show this film free of cost. During those, uh, show them four times in a day, free of cost. And not only that, but government collects 1% of the tax from them for showing this film. Now, for a theatre owner, instead of showing a 10 to 15 minutes documentary film, which nobody is interested to watch, he prefers to show 15 advertisement films mm -hmm. for which he gets a revenue. Mm -hmm. So, I have seen happening with my film, with my own film, where I took 15 uh, people buying their tickets and show they see my film as release in theatre. And what I saw was the first minute of the title and the end title, in between everything was cut. Though Films Division claims that they have uh, people who watch and find, but it never happens. No theatre owner is interested in showing a documentary film. Similar case happens with the newsreel. That the newsreel which is produced in this week, like I have seen our Republic Day Parade newsreel in the month of May, six months later. Why audience should see that? And especially in these days when they almost see everything live on television, why should he say, should see the Republic Day Parade six months later? So my idea was that if you, instead of forcing people create for creating an audience, you have to isolate them from the cinema goers mm -hmm. and then show this. So this, these were the things which I had suggested. Uh, so when I was, when this festival, uh, sorry, this seminar was on, that time the textile strike, you know, uh, uh, which is the biggest textile strike, longest textile strike, I should say. Biggest in the sense that around 2 lakh 50 thousand textile workers were in that strike. So it's about 250 thousand. Yeah. And, uh, and this was in Bombay. It, this was in Bombay. And uh, Bombay uh, is actually the biggest sort of a center of this textile mills uh, mm -hmm. in, our, in our country. And uh, uh, they were on strike. Means when the seminar was on, uh, the strike had uh, come into the 10th month. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, taking a sort of, uh, making this, uh, my paper as a takeoff point, uh, there were some 750 delegates in that seminar where I said that, for example, that's for, for example, see this textile strike now, which is going on for last 10 months. It will soon complete one year. Who is documenting this? None of us thinks it's necessary that People around us, around 2,50,000 textile workers are in this town, are on strike and we feel that we should have no knowledge of them. Mm -hmm. Do, does your conscious permit this thing to happen? You call yourself uh, 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 people who appreciate cinema and you people who support the documentaries. But are you aware that what must be going on, why the strike goes on for 10 months? And when it goes on for 10 months, what kind of sacrifice, what kind of preparation, what are the reasons that somebody decides that he will not go on work till his demands are met? I said, are you aware? We, I said that we are uh, people who believe in dining table democracy, a typical white collar mentality. We chat and we discuss on our cocktail parties how these people must be suffering or we blame the leader and just forget about it. But you can't just say that you have nothing to do with it because we are, you are wearing clothes. You know, it's, it's something, this is your association with them. And tomorrow, my question to the audience was this, that tomorrow, don't you think that you, around you and me, there are so many problems for which we should in fact go for 10 months time? Are we prepared? Do we know what is the strategy of going for a 10-month strike? For example, 
now the textile worker who is on 10th month uh, strike, his wife is washing utensils. His sons and daughters have left schools and selling papers and vegetables. If I decide to go on textile, uh, if I go to decide on a strike for 10 months for any kind of this uh, problem, or for that matter, even if my wife decides to go on a strike, are we ready to do such kind of sacrifice and such kind of uh, to show this kind of understanding? So I said that for me as a documentary filmmaker, it's very, very necessary that a documentation has to be done. And I told them, you know what has happened to the documentation done by our films division. That they did a documentation when this strike was six months old. And uh, they interviewed certain workers who were very, very negative about the whole uh, uh, struggle. And who said that we are repenting, we, we feel very sorry and we are exhausted and kind of thing. And they very purposely uh, release this particular documentary and the newsreel in the areas where the textile workers reside, means most of the textile workers. And I think for the first time, the Films Division must have got an excellent feedback of their work that around 18,000 textile workers went to the Films Division office in a procession and forced them to withdraw that film. Mm -hmm. So based on this particular incident, uh, a friend of mine, Professor Sudhir Yardi, he is a professor of economics and head of the department at Wilson College, Bombay. He wrote a script called a para-documentary script. And his idea was that how a documentary should have been made on a textile strike. And it was a one rupee book. It came in the uh, form of a folder. In, in the preface, he mentioned that uh, I don't have a money to make a documentary film but because it's a very expensive medium. But I thought that at least I have a pen and paper, so let me express. And honestly, that's what touched me a lot. And that's what I told the audience, that there's one person who has a faith in this medium. And we are not doing anything about it. And as a documentary filmmaker, I feel that based on this script, a documentary has to be made. OK, we decide to make a documentary film. What about the funds? I said, do you think I should go to NFDC, National Film Development Corporation, and ask for the loan? Do you think they will allow me to do a film which you want to see and I would like to make? Should I go to Films Division? Do you think we'll be able to make a film which you and me would like to see? Mm -hmm. It will never happen. So if you are convinced that a documentary should be made, you pay me the money and I will make a film. Mm -hmm. I will direct free. I will not charge any remuneration. But let us make the first people's film. I call this a first people's film. It's audience participation. And I literally took a bag and went around people collecting money. And uh, I collected something like 1,500 rupees that day, which I'm sure you are aware, one can't buy a small uh, raw stock, one reel of raw stock. Uh, but it started like that, means mm -hmm. it, it took off like that. And uh, today, uh, the film is ready. Uh, it's a 50-minute documentary in color, where uh, uh, I must have collected uh, donations worth 70, 80,000 rupees. And the most important part, uh, as I said, that I really don't want to share the entire credit of this film. It's a people's film. Where there are all technicians, there are a lot of agencies, those who have helped, those who have given help in cash and kind, those who have given their, have given their equipment uh, free of cost or charging less, those who have helped, like my cameraman, my uh, other technicians have worked free of cost for this film. So, to my mind, uh, this film has an importance in that point of view. A, that it has documented the world's biggest strike, and B, it has shown a definite way. Yes, the, uh, you know, the, my process, my attempt to create an audience for the documentary film is fruitful and uh, is, uh, is in the right direction. That was proved. Mm -hmm. it's, it's simple that people want to pay money. I mean, mm -hmm. people would like to contribute, provided, provided they are convinced mm -hmm. what for they are paying. You see, the most touching part of uh, the whole experiment all over these days, that uh, this whole project took me five years. I mean, whenever I used to get money, I would go shoot and wait for the next money to come. What but was your total final budget? Uh, well, uh, uh, it's around a lakh and fifty thousand, more than that, around. But uh, during all these five years, uh, all those donors, those who helped, met me a lot of time. But 
uh, the most touching part of it that none of them inquired me what happened to their money. They inquired me what happened to the film. Mm -hmm. And I think that was quite encouraging. That was mm -hmm. quite supporting to the entire project that people didn't feel their money is waste. Mm -hmm. which sometimes they feel when they pay taxes. I mean, uh, here mm -hmm. they were very sure that the mm -hmm. film is going to be made and they are going to see a film like this. Mm -hmm. So this is how the whole project uh, came into being. And, it's, it's not and of course, by the time it was finished, the strike had already been over for three years, about. Yeah. Uh, well, that part of the strike was when almost after one and a half years it started fading out and uh, the workers started going on work. But as the film shows that uh, what it has done to the textile workers, with those who fought in a strength of 2,50,000 for mm -hmm. over 18 months, what it has done to them, it has created around 90,000 textile workers jobless. So as you were working on the film, the concept mm. evolved mm -hmm. according to how the strike mm. was... was uh, uh, developing mm. and so it became more uh, a kind of post-mortem mm. than mm. the original mm. solidarity mm. kind of film that you mm. intended mm. no it in fact uh, uh, that's not the entire uh, aspect of doing it I mean uh, my uh, purpose of doing this film was not to do a postmortem it's mm -hmm. in fact trying to bring out the textile workers strength which has not just came there uh, out of blue you know means the textile workers in our country are the people who are politically conscious and uh, a group of politically conscious people uh, who have organized workers kind of thing mm -hmm. right from pre-independence day means uh, my film mm -hmm. shows their participation in pre-independent uh, the st struggle freedom uh, freedom struggle of our country it shows how he uh, kept on attempting to change his uh, circumstances and how he fought throughout. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I'm attempting to do a very positive picture, uh, mm -hmm. uh, which I, I feel that it's uh, sort of a pre to post, post and present history. Mm -hmm. like so it's a kind of chronological yeah, analysis. Sure. Yeah. Uh, if it is a postmortem, it's, uh, it's it's a postmortem of definitely the politics played in it, mm -hmm. but it's definitely not a worker. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, uh, for him it was uh, mm -hmm. uh, he just couldn't decide. Mm -hmm. uh, he his his uh, protest was long, very strong to change his circumstances. His protest so was long again against the odds which he's facing. So even though the strike seemed to have been lost, in your view, it wasn't really lost because of this energy that was created? Is the, this what you mean? No, I, I feel that uh, this was one particular experience of this 2,50,000 textile workers over the 18 months. Uh, is uh, Will, I think, uh, give them, them or the future generation a direction, mm -hmm. a definite positive way as to how his future uh, struggles, uh, future strikes uh, should be led, uh, should be planned and should be fought. Mm -hmm. One thing that wasn't clear to me for the film, maybe because I'm from the film, but maybe I missed the context, was what mistakes these future generations mm -hmm. should avoid. I mean, why it wasn't clear to me whether there were mistakes made in this strike why it was lost and what future generations will have learned from this strike. Um, was, it, was it a kind of disunity that you, that you feel was responsible for the loss of the, the strike? No, it was more of a politics. Uh, it's, the, it's actually the leadership of this strike which has failed. And B, that there were very, very strong factors playing against this mm -hmm. strike. Mm -hmm. It was government, it was media, mm -hmm. it was mill owners. Mm -hmm. uh, these three forces were playing against mm -hmm. this strike, uh, uh, which had, which have control over everything. Like mm -hmm. uh, they have money, they have power, mm -hmm. and uh, 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 they have strength to 
pull on much much uh, for a better of there rather than textile worker as as the film shows that in the 18 months when uh, mills were going for automation the textile workers were selling their utensils you know mm -hmm. this is what was happening at two levels mm -hmm. so uh, this is what actually and because of this the whole struggle went on a to get the leadership of this strike basically when it was successful and then a slowly withdrawing as uh, they could see that it will never succeed mm -hmm. this is what uh, my film is trying to show the question of the leadership hmm. not living up to the expectations of the workers this i thought wasn't really clear what what was behind the kind of disunity among the leadership um did you did you um i guess you you sort of avoided the specific details of of why there was this dissension between the strike committee and the leader hmm. i mean was that yeah in fact that than you uh, no that that's what happened that initially when uh, some eight mills were on strike that time it was a different case but when uh, datta samant intervened you see he came to lead the strike there was a committee which was formed mm -hmm. uh, of other union and datta samant they, they had a common committee mm -hmm. which decided to lead the strike but slowly uh, they started departing because perhaps it's because of the longevity Mm -hmm. certain people thought that uh, so it wasn't over political issues that they disagreed uh it's more on the uh, tackling the strike mm -hmm. uh, leading the strike means the methodology or mm -hmm. how they should have uh, how do how they should operate mm -hmm. means the uh, decisions and the policies required to lead the strike after one year because i think it was an experience to everybody and where they i think differed and uh departed from each other and where i think the uh, textile workers were just left mm -hmm. uh ransomers they didn't know what to do mm -hmm. except to and you know the another force which is working uh, in the whole uh, show is rashtriya mil mazdoor sangh this called rmms which is a government owned a sort of a government control union of textile workers so there is another body which uh, kept on uh, you know took a uh, a very uh, a view of a you know uh, watching the everything happening instead of really trying to participate because they were definitely as i said the forces which were working mm -hmm. against were these you know uh, this was this was clear in the film the yeah. only thing i was curious about was the this sudden appearance of a of disunity among the leaders hmm. i mean at one moment we saw this great hmm. rally hmm. and then suddenly the voice over tells us that there was this disagreement hmm. and it just wasn't clear hmm. exactly the the causes for this disagreement but um anyway let let's um the, you say the producer was this indian school of social hmm. science hmm. this is a what is this institution yeah it is indian school is uh, uh, indian school of social sciences bombay is an a non governmental uh, is a private uh, organization who they run a documentation center and uh, documentation center uh, documentation center related to all social issues mm -hmm. and uh, they organize different kind of seminars does it have a political affiliation yeah they are uh, leftist organization basically and so are they affiliated with a specific party or yeah, communist party leftist communist, communist, communist party m uh, leftist uh, yeah leftist i mean marxist i think marxist yeah cpim yeah. hmm. um and um so was the cpim also involved in the uh, organization of the strike they were yes but Uh, uh, the joint action committee basically so they were in the joint action huh, committee they were in the joint action committee because this wasn't clear also in mm. the in the film exactly whether the strike mm. in, included traditional party 
factors or party dynamics. Yes, yes. The Joint Action Committee represented mm -hmm. all this uh -huh. under the leadership of Dutta Saman. But see. when they realize that the whole balance is going uh, or shifting to Dutta Saman's leadership, Mm -hmm. And he is not ready to listen to the decisions taken by Joint Action Committee. There where the differences started. Like the film shows that uh, they had given a call for a jail bureau, fill the jail situation. Mm -hmm. And Datta Samant was not agree, mm -hmm. uh, was ready, not ready to coordinate with that. But he wanted it to establish his own strength in the strength of the whole thing. So there were two separate jail bureau on the, the fill the jail organization same day at two different places. Mm -hmm. This is what uh, the film shows that yes. uh, from there the split started. I see. Um, has the Indian School of Social Science been involved in films before or was no. this the first time? Uh, in fact, uh, as I said that uh, they never thought a film would be made. Mm -hmm. uh, they are mainly involved in um, doing a documentation. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, running this uh, school for organizing seminars, lectures, mm -hmm. and a uh, lot of other uh, social activities. And what about the CPIM? Do they have a program of uh, having to do with films and using films in their political work? Honestly, I don't have an idea. I, mean, I don't think, uh, to my knowledge, uh, anybody has sort of made films with this purpose. You know, uh, the reason that uh, I think this was the first attempt which was made to mm -hmm. really document this, mm -hmm. uh, such a big, big event. So there's not really a history of films being used uh, for strikes or for political work, uh, political organization in, in Bombay or that you know of? Uh, I'm not aware of it, honestly. Uh, mm -hmm. There are some films being made. They there is a possibility and I personally feel that they must be making films uh, for the simple reason that otherwise they have no exposure to uh, mm -hmm. the, the, the kind of media coverage, the kind of publicity, the kind of registration and recognition they want for their work. Uh, they, uh, they, this is one of the way of like one runs his own newspaper mm -hmm. uh, taking his ideology, representing an ideology. Similarly, I am very sure they must be making films. Mm -hmm. uh, doing their own job, uh, covering the activities, sure. Well, you never know because not every political um, party recognizes the, the, huh. the value of cultural work or... or okay, while you were gone, your wife was explaining a little bit to huh. me about some of the political background. Yeah, I am a bit uh, weak about it. Well, I think I understand a little bit more. She was talking a little bit about the tension between the strike committee hmm. and the... Uh, and Data Saman, the, 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 the Joint leader. Action Committee and Data Saman, right. And so that was very interesting. Hmm. Um, and also the fact that Sudhir, hmm. the scriptwriter, hmm. and you have slightly different hmm. yeah. orientations in the film. True, true. Uh, it's like this that, uh, now of course, one thing is there that he has to represent a particular political ideology in which he wrote the script. Mm -hmm. uh, frankly, I wasn't aware of it because mm -hmm. uh, I am politically conscious, but I am not politically aware. Um, I means I am politically aware. Sorry, I am politically aware, but I am not politically sort of active. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I have not so far uh, put any label. I, mean, I don't belong to any political ideology. I was just taken by his uh, faith in the documentary and his attempt to write a para documentary script. Uh, but when I went through and then we started discussing about it. Uh, I told him that uh, let us make a very balanced film. Uh, and honestly, uh, initially I was not very ready to take sides. Uh, but uh, I experienced not only Sudhir Yadi, but a lot of people who donated money. And I, when I explained them, they said that how can you make a film without taking any side? You have to. To which I uh, agreed. Mm -hmm. But uh, I told him that uh, though we are perhaps taking sides, but let us put, uh, uh, let us make this film a total representative. Miss, let us not make just a political film out of this strike. Uh, let us try to go beyond that, you know, and uh, make it more human. Uh, 
show, involve family, involve other organizations. Means strike is not something which was, what I was trying to capture was the support. That's what I wanted to show to this audience that mm -hmm. when, when one star, two lakh fifty thousand textile workers go on strike, there are so many elements, mm -hmm. so many things happen during the strike. Mm -hmm. which may know which may not directly happen with the textile worker but may happen with the family like in the film you must have seen that uh, when the strike went on for six months um, normally during the vacations uh, when the school closed down for summer vacations uh, these textile workers took their families to their hometowns to the villages but when they came back they came back only with their sons all daughters most of the daughters were left in the village for doing household jobs because they said we have no money to support uh, the daughter for education while they say we can support a son. I mean, uh, as in one of the teacher in the interview says that you call a woman a uh, weaker section of the society. But when it comes to sacrifice, it's the woman who is put forward. Like th Thousands of girls were deprived of education. No, these are the kind of mm -hmm. effects and this is, I, I consider, as a sacrifice one has, uh, the family members have done by supporting. This for me, these moments for me were the, among the strongest in the film where you have these testimonies to the camera from the people involved in the strike, uh, such as the school teacher you mentioned or, or also the, the headmasters, the headmasters, but also the workers themselves, the, yeah. wo the woman explaining about selling her ornaments. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. And I don't think a, a Western spectator w would realize that uh, a family's ornaments mm. and utensils mm. are something that's inherited from mm. generation to mm. generation. A, a woman at her, her wedding receives mm, yeah, ornaments sure. yeah, yeah. And, and the utensils. Yeah, sure. So right. selling these is mm. like almost the ultimate sacrifice yeah, for true, a family. True, true. And another very strong moment for me was seeing the worker in the dorm or in the in the hostel, the whatever you call mm -hmm. these workers, yeah, well, speaking right. to the camera. Yeah. A really shocking image of the... the Plight of how they stay, how they yeah. come and uh, they have to accommodate themselves. Well, these are the points which uh, I thought uh, would bring uh, you know, which will create moments of audience participation. Mm -hmm. If you make a totally political film, mm -hmm. uh, then perhaps people with those ideologies or people against of that ideology may enjoy. Uh, may well, like. I don't think you mean political because I think the whole thing is political. I think mm -hmm. what you mean is doctrinaire or yeah. mm -hmm. sectarian. Yeah, yeah, true. Mm -hmm. Because I, I really feel even those moments are very mm -hmm. political, but mm -hmm. they don't have this kind of doctrinaire. Mm -hmm party allegiance to them. Mm -hmm. I think there were moments in the script mm -hmm. that were a little bit guilty of this this kind of mm -hmm. of rhetoric mm -hmm. which which I thought were redundant. Mm -hmm. I mean we didn't need a voice telling us at certain points how terrible this is because we can see how terrible mm -hmm. it is. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether you felt that way about the narration or not. Mm, yes of course. It was in fact written in that way. Mm -hmm. that uh, it uh, reflects that feeling wherever perhaps uh, the thing uh, by being a supportive thing to what mm -hmm. we have seen that was a well, uh, I think it, uh, perhaps uh, you might, mm, might have uh, saw a poet you know the person yes. in between towards the end uh, uh, throughout in between he appears yes now he's uh, Mr. Narayan Survey mm -hmm. uh, he's a leading poet of Marathi and once upon a time a textile worker himself so and the idea was to not uh, uh, romantic romanticize the whole thing but to put that thing in, in stark reality which he has faced throughout his life mm -hmm. so even his poems have been used as a commentary in the film to support the point which you are trying to say and you get the title also from his poem no? yeah uh, although the city looked quiet you know, Although the city looked quiet, okay. yeah, that's the title of the film. <laughs> Sorry, uh, uh, because that is his poem, which uh, at the end he says, "Although the city look, although my village, my city, my town, look quiet, but I've kept the uh, what is that? I'm sorry, uh, twist, 
uh, I don't really recall the lines. I, I, I will tell you. Uh, huh, it's actually in Marathi. It's uh, uh, in my language. It's Shanta Disle Zari Shahar. Maza Gao Maza Desh. Muthi Vallele Hat. Ghara Ghara Thevle. Like although you see the city, my village, town, quiet. I have kept the uh, what is it? fist clinch uh, ready mm -hmm. for the further style for the further style. And this yeah. is the last image in the film, isn't it? Yeah. The poster with the yeah the fist, isn't it? The last image. Yeah, the last image, in fact, is uh, uh, I don't know. You noticed there, there was a chimney, the the, yeah. uh, the mill chimney, out of which a tree has grown, you know, to show the longitude. The tree right. has. And from there, I dissolved to the uh, this place, this, this. Getting back to those moments where you're actually interviewing people hmm. on location in their homes or hmm. in the, where they stay, or in hmm. the, can you talk a little bit about filming those situations? What was your relationship like with those people as you were filming them? Uh, well, initially, uh, uh, they were a bit reluctant to speak you know to out tell. of fear or uh, it was uh, not out of fear but uh, I think uh, they were uh, the determination was there uh, they, they, they know what they were trying to do uh, they were quite confident about their leadership uh, and moreover uh, they were very much convinced about the uh, about the reasons for which they are on the strike for over that period of time, the two, three demands which they were asking for, mm -hmm. uh, they were quite convinced. Uh, I mean, uh, to me, it never appeared that it was a forced kind of thing on them, as the other union in the film says that, that the textile strike is forced on the workers. I at least didn't get the feeling uh, during my all interviews uh, that it has been forced. Mm -hmm. been, it was very voluntary. They, it was with a tremendous determination, and they knew, like uh, uh, the Tas Samant himself has said in his interview, that they were ready to take the entire responsibility of the strike. And, and taking a responsibility is not only winning, but is losing also. And so, as they said that when the Tas Samant said that you'll have to be on a strike for six months, they said we are ready for one year. How about that? And it's, they, they knew what they had done. That's what the feeling I got out of my interviews. Mm -hmm. And so some of these individuals that you filmed, hmm. how did you persuade them to overcome their reluctance to speak? Uh, <coughs> no, in fact, I uh, have such interviews uh, with me uh, where uh, they, they really were not very sure. Miss. Uh, and uh, I, I found those interviews to be uh, a little uh, uh, too aggressive kind of thing, you know, means, uh, as I said, that there are certain class of interviews which we found what they are doing, but there are certain, which happens in any mass uh, movement, that few definitely join for the, you know, sort of, for the, uh, because they can't, stay separate or they are sort of driven into it. Mm -hmm. There are certain interviews like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, as I said that once we decide that we are doing a, a positive statement about the textile strike, we are doing a, we are doing a, a pro-worker film, definitely. Mm -hmm. So uh, this f uh, very few segment where uh, they were not sure what they are doing or they were not sure about what's going to happen. Uh, I decided to sort of uh, not use those interviews. What was your ratio of the... Your proportion of material taken and then used? Oh, uh, well, uh, I think I've used almost 70% what I've shot. More than almost 70. Go ahead. You want to go past? Yes. <laughs> We just go out and there will be more white. Okay. Okay. Um, the, the woman that mm. you interview mm. who has sold her ornaments. And the Dostana Union, she said, Kamsale. 
He's telling him not to bring his friends, otherwise. Uh, <laughs> yeah, above all, not <laughs> his friends. <laughs> Sorry. Um, in that kind of a situation, did you already know these people? Did you get to know them before the filming them, or? Uh, uh, yeah, I, we had sort of uh, did a pre-research about it, you know, whom we are going to interview. And as you know, in filming that uh, somebody has a lot of information but he can't communicate. There are few people who have less information but they communicate very, very effectively. Yeah. So one has to choose this uh, during that course. But one thing I can assure that nothing was forced. Mm -hmm. We never put our own statements into their mouth. We never forced anyone to say what we want them to say. It's all what they want to say, they have said. Well, I think this was clear. I think you can usually tell if a, a respondent is hmm. being natural and spontaneous or whether uh, their, their speech is being scripted. You can always tell. Don't you think when you're looking at a film? No, as I tell you, that the whatever we have in the script, uh, we haven't followed the script line by line. Mm -hmm. My film is based on so they had this script. Mm. So at certain places, it was a uh, revealing experience for us. Mm -hmm. Like for example, this uh, particular place where uh, these people, some 70 people stay in a room, which is not in the script. It is through going to people, making research, contacting a lot of people, we are making a film, do you, uh, well, what do you think? Uh, we heard of such thing, where is this place? Or you know, that way, like certain, uh, people migrated to villages. We went and have had their interviews. So, so that way, the certain portion miss, uh, uh, was totally uh, even an uh, information new to us. Mm. Uh, it was revealing, means it was an experience to us. So there was no, uh, the question does not arise of, you know, guiding them to say this, because what they were saying was an information for ourselves, mm -hmm. or a new information to us. Putting, uh, giving a new dimension to the script, uh, to the film rather. I have one um, final question. Mm. Um, what are your plans for distributing the film? Who is your intended audience? How do you intend to use it? Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, one uh, area was that uh, since you know we have done this film totally on donations. Uh, and of course, at cert certain part we have to then get got the things on credit. Like we'll pay later if we get money. So uh, even if we sell this film, and if somebody buys this, uh, it would be one objective that we'll pay back these people, those who have given us services on credit. Uh, then we uh, we intend to show this film through different film societies. We have a very good network. We have a lot of film societies all over India, where we thought we would show this film. And uh, I don't see any hope of it's getting distributed through Films Division or our Doodarshan. Uh, perhaps uh, showing it to the international TV network where mm -hmm. people could see. And what about unions or political parties or these groups? Well, we would certainly would like them to see this film. Uh, they are sort of uh, audience. but. We would like to show this film more to the, as I said, that it's, uh, we don't want to use, we in fact don't want this film to be used politically. So we would not like, in fact, given a choice, go to unions and ask them to see this film. This is my personal view. I would like to use this film to show the audience that this is a documentary film which is made by the audience for the audience. Mm -hmm. This would. This would be my choice. To but presumably, them. you want workers to be a substantial part of your audience, do you? Uh, yeah. Well, uh, as I said, I don't know uh, what will be the reaction. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the best people to decide this would be the uh, 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 those unions and those are people who have participated. Miss mm -hmm. uh, the the. Audience, uh, these textile workers are part and parcel of my film, mm -hmm. and uh, I would certainly like them to see this film. And I don't see any harm in seeing they're seeing this film. Mm -hmm. But my objective would be to uh, strengthen the, uh, to create awareness in the audience that uh, films like this 
should be supported by the audience. This perhaps the one way that such kind of things can be made. Okay. Um, your wife was telling me also just one final thing that you're hoping to get off the ground a video documentation center. Yeah. Could you explain a little bit about that? Yeah. That That's. Uh, you see, what I have decided that uh, uh, now since this film will be distributed through international network and we'll be showing it to film societies it may get some recognition through awards and whatever the money comes in and prize and all that uh, i don't want to stop at this moment because uh, completing this film i have definitely gained a confidence that peop uh, people have right to know the whole purpose of doing this film and perhaps the peop and the people who have put in money with was a sole objective is people's right to know everything all sides all dimensions so the idea is that if i get money from this film though i don't have to return this money though because it's all donations i would like to utilize the money which comes in uh, to set up one video documentation center uh, on my own and uh, again the idea would be that uh, i would like to get four five motivated socially conscious video cameraman means those who have a video camera and who use the that camera for their bread and butter by covering marriages and functions and birthday parties and cultural functions i would ask them or request them to give their camera for one day to me as their social commitment so that either they come with me or i go with their camera and uh, try to document uh, whatever the current problem or the, that problem prevails that time and uh, conduct interviews, collect a lot of, uh, sort of do a total documentation uh, of that particular issue. It may be social, political, economical, it would be any issue. That, that's my whole idea of uh, going ahead with this project, the second step. It's a very good idea because I'm sure television and films division do not cover all of these activities. Hmm. But they're neglected by the media, and it's very important for us to. No, and uh, Thomas, uh, what has motivated me, like you know, even uh, in a media, uh, what irritates me more is that any newspaper, or any magazine, or any weekly or fortnightly, can take out a special issue, say the current problem, say a Bofors issue. They can write they can take out a specialist but documentary filmmaker in this country is not allowed to make a documentary on that I mean I'll not allowed in the sense that he knows if he makes it what will happen is this just one problem but there could be a social problem like that that could be any other problem on which uh, sensitive issues uh, on which uh, if, uh, you can write you can speak you, but you can't make a documentary film which is I think very wrong thing uh, and I just want to have a breakthrough this that no if I have a right to speak, I have a right to uh, write about it, then I have a right to film it and I have a right to document it. Well, the best of luck and I hope you <laughs> Thank succeed. You. Thank you.